things give him glory. Jesus, blessed Savior. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Once again, our Sunday school lesson was the word resurrects. And, and if you have anything dead in your life, my suggestion to you is to call upon the name of Jesus. Because he's the only one that can do anything with it. And here's the good news. He is willing and he is more than able to do that with God's love. So that would be my suggestion to you. We're going to have our intercessory prayer now. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for Jesus the author and the finish of our faith, knowing that without him we can do absolutely nothing. I pray that you breathe on our service this morning, our, our morning worship. Thank you for calling us into this service. It wasn't by happenstance that we woke up this morning with a heart set on you. So we just want to say thank you. Bless us now and breathe on our pastor this morning as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. intercessory prayer time. How about that part? <laughs> uh, let us let us sit ourselves to the side because the word says we ought not consider ourselves to be something when we are nothing. We should put the other's needs above ourselves and so right now is the time for us to intercede and to pray for one another. You pray for your neighbor, your neighbor pray for you. Uh, you. You pray for the man down the street, the woman down the street. They pray for you. You'll find out you won't have to do much praying for yourself because you got a whole community of folk that's praying for you. We are praying for one another. So let us pray for the jail ministry. And I, my prayer is I got a call from them. Uh, I was at work and I don't have my phone on me at work. They didn't leave me a message, but I left them a message when I called them at my break time. 
I said, if the jail is open, please let me know. Send me a text or anything. Just, just let me know. So keep praying for the jail ministry. Yeah. Reverend Richard Curry, Sister Miriam Ruth Newsom, Cora Clayton, Brother Richard and Sister Easter Sneed, Sister Dolores Scott, Jennifer Rainey, Sister Hilda Myers, Reverend Matthew Quarterman and family, Brother Willie and Sister Patricia Fairbanks, Sister Gwendolyn Thomas, Sister Alberta Biden, Biden, Bowden, I'm sorry, Vanetta Jackson, Brother Carlos Robinson, Reverend Theodore and Sister Mary Johnson, Brother Michael Hazel, Sonia Queen, Jane Zett Wallace, Sister Latoya Hall, Sister Hattie Wallace, Brother Michael Sutton, Brother Quint Wallace, Brother Kenneth and Sister Faye Jefferson, the Reverend Fred King, Sister Blondina and Brother Herbert Caswell, Sister Brenda Sapp, Brother Samuel Ballinger, Sister Phyllis Luckett, Daryl Springfield Jr., Sister Dorothy Johnson, Sister Michelle Walker, Quentin McCall, Linda Wright, the Hill family, Sherry Cox, Sister Ramil Howard, Brother Bobby, T Bobby Tucker Jr., Valencia Sutton, Brother Ivory Godwin, Brother Nicholas and Sister Andrea Jiggets, Louis Scott, Sister Cynthia Kendricks, Trey Hobby, Brother Adrian Limbrick, Sister Melvinia Simmons, Brother Herbert Fitzpatrick, Sister Carolyn Campbell and family on the death of her son, Michael Donison. Memorial service will be uh, Sunday, Saturday, 11 o'clock a.m. at the church. She's family on the death of her son, Michael Donison. Let's lift her up in prayer. Father, we want to thank you today once again. It's, it's times like these to I personally get tight tongued because there's so much going on in our lives, so much going on in the country, so much going on on this prayer list. But I have confidence in your word. Your word says, your word says that neither death nor life, nor troubles, nor terrors, nor Sickness or distress shall separate me from your love, which is in Christ Jesus. So I just want to say thank you today. Forgive us of our confessed sins, Lord, and just breathe on us. And make us ready to hear from your pastor today. But Lord, look at this prayer list. You are the resurrector. You are the one that can bring... Uh, uh, joy out of discomfort you are the one that can turn sorrow into love you are the one that can turn badness and hatred into peace you are the one so we give this prayer list to you Lord and you can just do whatever you decide to do with it and, and our prayer is that you will give us uh, the courage and the faith and the grace to say amen to your word. We're going to trust your word. So just thank you for it. Now breathe on the St. Joseph family as only you can. Those that are here and those that are not here. Breathe on us Lord and just continue to bring us back together again as only you can do. This is your church. You, you died for your church. So we want to thank you for that. It's your church. And this is your pastor. 
So breathe on him and touch him so he can teach us. So we can teach others that then others can teach others. And then again, Lord, breathe on this prayer list as only you can. Breathe on the St. Joseph family individually and collectively. And after the message is gone forth from your preacher today, your pastor, my prayer is that you will save and add to your church as such should be saved. And it is always our prayer in Jesus' name. And let us say together, amen, amen. and praise the Lord.
God is wonderful. He certainly is wonderful. I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus, our Christ. I am, I am grateful to be here this morning. I'm so grateful to be in church school this morning as well. Um, Reverend Gibson taught a strong lesson and that in our lesson I learned and I saw where Jesus groaned twice. The Bible says he groaned within himself. He was that troubled with unbelief. That troubled him so much that he groaned within himself. And that thing, that thing just jumped off the page to me. I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I just been caught up in this lesson this morning and now listening to the song. But I stand now for the reading of our scriptures. <laughs> oh man, this is all right. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 66. And we've been instructed, we've been instructed to read 61. Lord, I do this all the time. I tell you, I'm, 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 I'm everywhere. Y'all just be patient with me. I'll get there. God, I, maybe at the summit 66, I need to see you. <laughs> and I read that whole thing twice. <laughs> Ain't God good. <laughs> good to see you, brother. It's good to be here again. Isaiah 61. Is that all right? All right, so we've been instructed to read verses 1 through 10 in a response manner in verse 11 all together. So when you have that, please signify by saying amen. amen. Thank the Lord. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons for them that are bound. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of Aelin shall be your plowmen and your van dressers. For your shame ye shall have doubled. For your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore their land they shall possess the double, every lasting joy be unto them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Bringeth forth her bug as the get, get. 
so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nation. St. Joseph, you just have read the living word of God. May you be blessed. Amen. what he says no question about it I don't care what we think we know what God says is what's going to transpire and come about and so 
let us stop trying to go all around the bush and around the tree and over the pond just to come right back to where we're supposed to be in the first place, following what God has put in place. That's why in our lives there are so many times that we forget that God is our God and that he's our Lord and that he's our Savior. And I just thank God, you know, that he is the Lord of my life and, and I know for a fact that he is Lord and God of St. Joseph. There's no question about it. He has shown himself over and over as he has defeated giants and still fighting giants, uh, maybe of a different kind now, but still fighting giants. And, and he's going to be, be, be victorious. There has not been a battle yet that he has been in that he has not won. So I don't know why Satan feels that he has the upper hand, because he doesn't. I just give thanks to him for my life, for my wife, and for all that he is to me. And I pray that you all see him in the same way. Without him, there's no telling what my life would be like. As a matter of fact, I have sort of an idea because there were times past when I did walk this life without him. And now that I have the hindsight and that he has allowed me to live to see the difference, it was misery like undescribable but now that he's the Lord of my life oh it is so beautiful so wonderful so peaceful so joyful and I would not trade it for anything else in this world give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to this great church this great ministry to the men that are on the pulpit with me, Reverend Gibson, Reverend Fisher, to the deacons of this church, God bless you for all that you are doing and have done, to the deaconess, that without them, there would, uh, uh, the deacons could not be comfortable enough to do what God has planned for them to do, so thank you for being so, so patient with them and loving them and and, and, and seeing about them and all the good things that you do. To this great choir, as always, I, I never am able to find the words that I want to say to, to really say how, how beautifully you minister in the word. Uh, you, you seem to find the, the music that fits the, 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 the message, fits the worship. And that's beautiful because if you go in some churches a day, again, you don't know who they sing, sing into. You sit there for a minute, are they singing into Jesus or are they singing into their lover? You know, I mean, or, or, or who are they talking about? Oh, I love you so. I thought you would break my heart, but I found that you are, the, huh? Who, who are you talking about? Never slow down to call his name or nothing. I mean, I'm serious. But St. Joseph, y'all do a wonderful job in selecting the music that identifies and lifts Jesus, and that's so important. So that's why I thank the directors, Deacon Groom, Deacon, uh, Deacon Austin, the musician. I mean, you know, <laughs> you are really, really blessed with the talent and the gift that you have, Brother Simpkins. Um, as a musician myself, I, I, I can hear it, and it's beautiful. And to uh, Sister Teresa, there she is, trying to hide over there, but she can't hide. Got that mask on, trying to hide. Thank you. Thank you for, for your contribution to the music ministry. To the ushers, and I really want you to pay special, special, special attention Special, special attention to Sister Campbell. I mean, she is an example of a saint that has been taught by the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God has visited her home and, and has 
done his majestic work. We don't understand why and how, but as he has transitioned your son into his presence, and you are standing here on post blessing others, you know, when you are in the position to be blessed. I thank God for you. And you really show what, what it means to be a born again believer. Bless you. Bless you. To the multimedia ministry, great job. You just have us sounding so good up here. You know, in reality, we don't sound this good, believe it or not. Trust me. You know, but uh, you, you, you do, a, do a great job. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. And then to, to St. Joseph. You are a wonderful, wonderful church. You are a family that's, that's beyond description. Whenever there is a need, it seems like as soon as the need shows itself, we look up and spiritually, we see you right there with your arms open to love and to comfort. You, you are a special people. And God's gonna bless you immensely. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving myself out. I am part of St. Joseph. So he's going to bless us immensely as he's already starting to do, as he's already continuing to do. Even though this COVID tried to put an interruption, interruption to it, God is showing that, hey, I'm greater than, than, than this COVID. I'm greater than anything that uh, this world system can throw. So you are such a special people. Now, Sister Gregory today, I want you to pray for her. She has one of those nasty summer colds. And it is a cold. This, she is so, I don't know, what's, I don't know what the word is. I don't know what the word is. Well, no, no. She's taking two tests, two COVID tests, to be sure she doesn't have, the, have COVID, you know. So, but she's coughing and sneezing and, you know. So I'm saying, baby, you get well while I sleep on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we just just pray for her that she she recovers. You know, poor thing. She she's not feeling well at all. Well, it's so good to see everybody today. Today is a blessing. It's a beautiful Sunday. It's just a gorgeous day for us to be alive and to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing like the fellowship of believers. Nothing. Sure enough, you can enjoy the message from home or whatever, but look at the, the, the camaraderie. Look at the, the, the joy. I want to use the word vibes, but I don't, I don't know whether that fits or not. But what I'm getting at, we can discern the spirit of each other as, as we are among each other, and it makes the day even that much more beautiful. And so... As we bask in that, I pray that you would have your hearts open so that we can hear what God has planned for us today in his word. Father, thank you for all that you do. God, you have not invented any new words yet to try to describe you and your glory other than to say that you are just awesome. You are awesome beyond measure in how you fit every situation in our life. Father, we ask that you would now forgive us of our sins and that now you would prepare us so that we can preach your word with clarity and with boldness. But also, Father, that those that are in the hearing would receive your word, for it will bless it will make changes in their lives and it would cause you to be more present in their lives. Bless us in this moment, for it is your moment. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of us shall say together, amen, and praise the Lord. Amen. Again, what a beautiful day today is. 
I notice that those of you that may have been in church school this morning notice that in the scripture lesson that we have for today, it was also one of the main points or main scriptures that we had in our church school. And trust me, uh, uh, Reverend uh, Gibson and I did not compare any notes. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit who brings all of this together to where he lines up with what he would have for his people to hear. And so as we go forth this morning, I, I want us to specifically pay attention to verse, uh, verse 3. This is where we are going to, to, to speak from this morning. And uh, the topic, and I always like to give one because it gives us a handle to where you can take the message uh, with you. You know, the Bible can be preached all the way through cover to cover, and, and a, a, a true title can never be given because it's all good news. It's all the gospel. It is all the word of God. But there's a, there are certain portions that you can bring out and put a title to it so that you can go forth and say, well, what do we talk about today? We talked about the Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. Who is the Messiah? The Messiah is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming. And he's coming for a purpose. And that purpose lies within each one of those whom he has saved. Each one of his people that proclaim that they are born again. The Messiah is coming. In verse 3, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, a festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. There are a few things that I want to bring out this morning as we talk about the Messiah coming, but as we focus more on the, on the thought of trusting in God. Trusting God. There is no one else that we can put our trust in that can stand no matter what comes in our life. God is the only one that can stand when everything else attacks from every angle. How many of us woke up this morning with a broken heart, worrying about where our grandchild is or, or worrying about where our child might be headed or, or worrying about how our spouse or our significant other, our loved one, worrying about something that we have no control over? How many of us woke up with that despair in our spirit this morning? This is where God wants, he wants to be the part of our life so that we can trust him and know that whatever that may be popping up that we have no control over, that he does, that he has total control over. There are certain things that I want to bring out this morning and matter of fact, there are four. And uh, let, let, me, let me give them up front, and then we'll go and look at each one individually. The first thing that we want to talk about is that God will give us comfort for brokenness. He will give us comfort for brokenness. That's one of the things that he promised in this, in this, uh, this scripture, in, in, in chapter 61, verse, uh, verse 3. He promised us that in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of life being broken down, he will give us comfort. Okay, that's the first thing that we want to talk about. The second thing, God will give us beauty for ashes. He will give us beauty for, for the ashes that we find in our life. The third thing, God will give us joy for mourning. 
when your heart is broken and you're mourning like you've never done before, God will give you joy in the place of that. And the last thing, God will give us a garment of praise. God will give us a garment of praise. And that one is quite interesting because how, do, how does that make sense? Praise belongs to God. But here we see that God has given us and promising us that he's going to cover us with his praise. And as he is the ultimate, as he is the sovereign, as he is God, as he is Lord in our lives, when we are his children born again and we are allowing him to be Lord in our lives, what people will start to sing, or rather what we will start to recognizing first, is that we will start to sing his praise upon us. And we don't deserve it, my brothers and sisters. We don't deserve it. No matter how good you think you are and no matter how you think you are doing good, you are never deserving of the praise that God places on us. Praise belongs to him. But here he is, a God that wants to share everything with us. As a matter of fact, he says to us clearly that because we are born again and that we are his child, that we are joint heirs with everything that he owns. We have no idea what that means while we're in this flesh. But you know what? When we're in glory, the moment that we're in glory and we see it all and then all of a sudden recognize that we are owners of all of these, all of this, then it will probably begin to start to sink in, but it's going to take all of eternity for us to recognize what we truly own, all because God died for each one of us. He died so that we could have that privilege. So let, let's, look at, let's look at the first one. God will give us comfort for brokenness. God anointed us to bring good news to the poor. He, he, he involves us in taking his word, his message, to those who are broken, to those who are poor in spirit. You know, poor, when we see that, doesn't mean that we're to go out and find broke people that got no money and start preaching to them, although they are also in the mix. That's not what God is talking about. Because there are those who are filthy rich in finances, but poor as they can be in their spirit. There are those that, 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 that have so much in resources that even their great-great-grandchildren can't spend it all. But yet and still, they have no purpose in their spirit to even live to the next day. That their hearts are broken, that their spirits are broken. But Jesus says that my word, I have a message for them, that I have a purpose for them, that if they look to me, if they would just receive me as their Savior and then as their Lord, that I will give them a purpose. And it will not have anything to do with what they own or what they got because all of that at one day will perish. Look at the, the parable that Jesus gave with the man that, 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 that made all of this money. And then all of a sudden, he found a way that he could make even more money. And so all of a sudden, he had no place to put it all. So he built a couple of more bonds just to store his money in. But then look what Jesus told him. He says, this night right here, not tomorrow night, I'm not going to give you a day to enjoy it. This night, your soul is required at the judgment seat. So riches got nothing to do with where you stand with God. Sure, it's comfortable to have a good bank account, and God will allow that. God, God will bless that. God will, in the midst of placing his garment of praise upon us, will cause us to live, have a life that's comfortable, which includes a good, nice bank account, uh, good health, uh, whatever that's in your mind that you think that will bring joy in your life, God will grant that. 
But what he says to us that what he wants, first of all, is for us to look at the kingdom, to look toward him. And he says, then I will bring blessings. When you have me first in your life, I will grant unto you the blessings that you are desiring, the desires of your heart. And he's so adamant about it, he tells us is that sometimes the desires of your hearts may seem to be extravagant. So you become really sort of ashamed, you know, if someone says, what is the desires of your heart? Well, really, I, I kind of don't want to share it with you because it may seem kind of kind of pompous or kind of uh, 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 greedy or kind of more than what you would expect someone to want. But Jesus says in his word, he says, don't let that bother you. He says, because I put those desires in your heart. The reason that you're having desires is because I put them there. But what you have to understand is that what I want you to do first of all is have your eyes set on the kingdom. God says, if I created everything and I'm telling you that because you are my child, you own everything in joint and jointness with my son and with me and with and with everyone else that's part of my family. He says that those desires are, 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 are nowhere is nothing compared to what I have in store for you. That's what Jesus says in his word. No matter how you may add up in your mind what is, what is important as far as resources and finances, he goes on to say, what I have in store for you just outweighs that so much until it would break a scale. God has planned for us, brothers and sisters, things that's beyond measure. That's why he says to us that he will give us his garment of praise, that he will put on us as if it was a coat, as if it was a covering, a garment, full of praise, full of everything that we would want or desire that's in life because he owns it all. He created it all. And he create, created it for us. He did not create it for Satan and his followers. God created it for us. But he wants us first to have our eyes focused on the kingdom. When we think of him giving us uh, a comfort in, in the midst of brokenness, uh, is to understand that he has a place and a purpose for all of us. You know, in scriptures, God goes on and says to us that come into my rest, he says, I'll give you rest from all of your labor. You know, give me your burdens and take mine. He says, my burdens are light. And the reason why his burdens are light is because he has taken it and he has answered all of them ahead of time. There, there's nothing that he hands to you that's, that has any kind of doubt. It has already been resolved. Your burdens, our burdens are full of doubt. And so what does it do? It burdens us down. It keeps our mind not on God, but on that thing that's, that's causing us discomfort in our spirit. So God says to us, I will give you, I will give you comfort for your brokenness. Now, now listen, you know what's beautiful about all of this? All of this was, was prophesied, was proclaimed, was preached to us back in the days of Isaiah, way before the Messiah even coming. And that's why part of the thinking that we want on our message today is the coming of the Messiah. That's the beauty of him coming because he has things for us. Now also in the midst of, of, of giving us comfort for our brokenness, he says he sends us to to, uh, he, 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 he sends us to comfort the brokenhearted so that those that are outside of the knowledge of who Jesus is, that we share the message so they can also enjoy that, that beauty. It, it's a shame that we have the secrets of, of, of God in, in his gospel message. We, we have access to the good news and there are those who are walking even right now on this earth that have never really heard the true message of Jesus. There are some children that have never even heard the name of Jesus. Can you imagine that with, in this day and time with technology and everything else, 
And, and there's been research on that, that that have really never even heard that name. And then there are those who are, are grown, who have lived their life or living their life and never, never, never knew, never understood what Jesus has to offer. The second thing that God promises us in the coming of, of his son, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, is that God will give us beauty for, for our ashes. You know, in our life, we tear stuff all to pieces. We do. Even when we think that we're going to be doing the right thing or we're, you know, we, we just mess it all up. How, how many have jumped in the midst of, of brokenness in our marriage and, and decided that we have the right answer for it and then at the end result has been just torn all to pieces? You know, the, 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 human nature, human flesh does not match what God has in his mind for, for, for the beauty that he wants us to have. When we take control of things and leave him out of the mix, it's nothing but ashes, it's nothing but debris. And, and, and when we look at our walk in life, that's all we see walking behind us is a trail of brokenness, a trail of just ashes rather than, ready to be picked up by the garbage truck. And so God says, I will give you beauty for the ashes that's in your life. He uses our failures more than our successes. He uses the failures, the ashes, he uses the failures in our life more than he uses the successes. Oh my God, what, what are you saying, Lord, to us when we make that comment? Well, when we mess around and then causes these ashes, these failures in our life, God uses that to teach us the right way of doing things, to teach us the way that he would have taken us, the way that he would have handled it, so that the next time that it crosses our path, we will have a better understanding and a better way of doing it. He will take our failures and use them more in bringing successes in our lives than the successes that we have found in our lives. Because the successes that we have classed as such is incomplete, is incomplete. Only the successes that Jesus bring in our lives are true successes. Let me give you an example. There is only so much of a resource that's, that's in this world. And if we plot and plan on how we are going to acquire that resource, a lot of times it's going to be at the expense of someone else. In, in other words, I, I, there, there, there are those that, that find it very profitable in, in say, buying foreclosed homes or or, or people that have struggled and about to lose uh, something that they've had in, you know, a, a, for, for a long period of time. And then they go through the process of trying to acquire that and, and bringing about riches and successes in their lives. Well, yes, once you get it and, and, and rebuild it up and do what you're going to do with it, there's a profit in it and, and you make, you make uh, 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 success out of it and you, you, you build your finances and that kinds of stuff and then the person that you really truly could have helped in the process has, that has been taken away from them you know it, 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 it is sad it, it is really a, a broken thing that you can talk about when someone has lost something that they have worked so hard to acquire and then someone else will make their living off of acquiring their brokenness to bring about successes for themselves. But, but listen here, God, when you have your mind totally set on God, you can actually take those types of scenarios if God is leading you to where some kind of way God can bring a blessing in the lives of those who have been, been hurt or destroyed. 
could, could it be that in the process of, say, one acquiring that, say, piece of property or whatever, could lead the person to finding something that's more affordable for them? Could, could it be that there is a ministering that could come about to, to help them be able to, to, to find something that's more in line with, with, with what they could afford? It, what I'm trying to say is that in our mindset, when we think of successes outside of God, a lot of times it could be at the expense of someone else's failures. And we have to be ever so careful in that. I hear people say, you know, the Lord blessed me this morning, and I was, how did they bless you? I was almost out of gas and couldn't come to church, and I went outside and I, I found $20 on my front porch. Well, first of all, you didn't find the $20 on your front porch. Second of all, it was on your front porch or somebody that's in your house that, that have misplaced it. And second of all, God didn't shortchange somebody to, to, to bless you in the process. You know. but, but, but all of that lies within God being Lord of your life. When you are allowing God to walk with you, then you can get by those things that uh, will pop up to where you are harming other people in the midst of your successes. But that is a true, true fact. God will use our failures more than he does our success. Now, we will also learn to trust God in the midst of our failures. When, when we have found that we have messed up and made wrong decisions, whether it be financially or, or personally or whatever, when we have failed, then God comes along. God can use that failure to teach us how to make stronger and better decisions. Why, why am I saying all of this this morning? It's because there are so many people that would give up because of failures that's in their life. God doesn't want you to give up because there's been a failure. He wants you to take those failures and find out what went wrong so that you can use them to make your life a better life. God does not allow things to come in your life to tear you down, to destroy you, or to cause you to throw your hands up and give up. God will use your failures to bring successes in your life. Thirdly, God will give us joy for mourning. That, that is such a beautiful, beautiful statement that uh, Isaiah makes. And, 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 and as I've been studying that scripture, I found that expressed in so many scriptures in so many ways that when there's grief, when there's mourning, when there's hurt, uh, from all situations, God will exchange that mourning for joy. And, 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 and the part about it that doesn't make sense is that he does not take the mourning away. He does not take the grief away. But the joy that he gives us overshadows it so all we are able to experience is the joy. That's, that, that's how God works. That's why those who don't understand look in and try to figure out what is going on. And Paul teaches us as he writes in scriptures, he says he does not want us to be ignorant on that fact. He doesn't. That, 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 that grief and joy that comes into the life of a believer, we deal with it in different ways. And the way that is different is that God will have joy that's in our life that will overshadow the morning. Don't you know that the sun is always shining? It is always shining. On a cloudy day, I don't know how many of you that's ever flown in an aircraft on a day that uh, you, you take off and it's cloudy and, you know, and it's kind of drizzling and it, and it looks horrible. You know, there's snow probably or, or it just looks like just, it's just an awful day that's down and then as you climb up through the clouds and get above the clouds and the sun is shining just as bright as it always is and a beautiful day but it's the same thing with the S-O-N the son of the Lord Jesus Christ is always shining in our hearts and in our life 
He is always there. There's always his joy that's present. Don't allow things that could be destroying your life, bringing you grief and mourning. Don't allow that to take control of your life. There is joy that's available that's always there because Jesus is always there. And he's promised us that he will never leave us, nor would he ever forsake us. The Bible teaches us that when there is trouble that's coming into your life, sing a song. <laughs> We're talking about joy over mourning. Whenever that there's mourning that's coming, that there's grief that's coming, sing a song. Pastor, what kind of song are you talking about? You know, I look back in the book of Zephaniah when God himself says in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, that God loves us so much that he visits us, and he, when he visits us, he visits us with singing. He sings to us, you know. Could it be that that's a song that he has made especially for us? Has it ever been that in your life, whenever there is, there is sorrow or when there is emptiness or whenever there is quietness that, that seems to hurt, whenever there is solitude in your life, it, it seems like there's a song in your spirit and, and it, 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 it is one that, that is seemingly you never heard before. There's no words to it, but you just find yourself humming it. You know, I know when my grandmother, when I was younger, when she'd be ironing and she'd be humming a song, and I would, Granny, what is that? You know, baby, that's in my heart, in my spirit. I don't know, you know. But, but, but uh, I, I believe that God has a song for each one of us for the pure purpose that when stuff happens in our lives, he wants us to start to just humming that song, singing that song. Mm. God will bless us. He will give us a crown, a crown of joy for the ashes that we find in our life. And then finally, God will give us a garment of praise. He'll give us a garment of praise. It, all of us know that we belong to God. That's the first thing that we know. And, and we also know that, that every single thing that he gives us he expects us to learn to trust him more and more by it. You know, there, 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 was, a, there, there was a preacher some, some, some years ago that, that, that was having a rough time within his ministry. As a matter of fact, within his pastorage. And uh, he, would all, he would always talk about it, but he was having a rough time on it. And so he said in this testimony, he said that uh, there was a, a, a lady that was uh, in the congregation, an older lady. Matter of fact, he said she was 70 years old. He gave the, and he was in his 30s. And, and she invited him to her house. And in his testimony, he said, you know, it didn't bother him. You know, the woman was 70 years old and he was in his 30s. He didn't, he didn't feel like it was no setup or nothing. He didn't feel like it was, no, you know, what I'm getting at. He didn't feel like there was no problem. So, so he, he goes to, 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 to visit her, goes home with her after service and everything. And so they got to the house, and in her living room was this big, huge picture of, a, of, of, of Daniel in the lion's den. And so she, she, she asked him, she says, uh, Pastor, she says, look at that, at that picture and tell me what you see. And... He said, I, I, I see uh, some lions, three lions, they're you know, laying down. And she says, what else do you see? And she said, I mean, he said, I see uh, some bones <laughs> laying down there by him, you know, will probably have eaten. She says, okay. She says, what else do you see? He says, I see Daniel standing there looking up at a, like a ray of light that's coming through a window in the den. And he has his hands tied behind, or not tied behind, but has his hand behind his back and just standing there and, and looking up. And she says, yes. And she says, what does that say to you? He says, it says to me that he is focusing on God. 
and not on the lions? And she says, yes. And that's where you need to focus your heart. Not on the lions that's within the church, but focus on God who has called you and placed you and have strengthened you where you are. And so that preacher says that day is when he truly learned to put his trust in God. No matter what he sees, no matter what is around him, even if it's a, a lions that's around him, that if he just put his mind on God, just, 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 just release himself, you know, with the expression of putting his hand behind his back. In other words, he cannot fight the battle. He has no way of fighting the battle, but just turning it all to God. God, you're in control. Even though there's a true possibility that I can be destroyed and be eaten alive, that my trust is in you, then God says, I will fight your battles. I will take care of it. And from that day forward, he said that he was able to minister without any kind of grief. Things straightened up, and he had more confidence in himself, in the ministry, because he started trusting God rather than his ability. And that's what it's all about, my brothers and sisters. In the coming of the Messiah, he gives us that ability. He gives us that ability to trust God. We can't trust him on our own. Because as soon as the lions come toward us, we will take off running. As soon as we see their teeth, we start to falling down crying. As soon as we think that it's about to be over with, we just give it up and then just let the world take us over. But God is saying that we're better than that. We're stronger than that because we are his child. And if we learn to put our trust in him, if we learn to trust him, that we'll start to understanding the gift that he's given us to where we are confident in the midst of the brokenness in our life. We'll start to understanding that, that, that he will take beauty in the midst of our failures. He will be the one to find in the midst of our failures the beauty that's in that and let us see that so that it will strengthen us to put the next foot forward. He would also cover the grief and the, the mourning and the, and, the, and the difficulties in our life. He'll cover that with the joy of his son, Jesus Christ, who is always present in our hearts. And he will give us a garment of praise that everywhere we walk, everything that we do, that people will see Jesus alive in our lives. That's what he will give us. That's what he promised us. The coming of the Messiah tells us that he will give us a life that, that, that cannot be walked in any other way if we don't have the Lord Jesus Christ. The question goes to you today as you ponder the reason why. And the reason why is because of what the gospel says is that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came into this world to give us that ability so that we can know that God is in control. That over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came in this world and was, was poked fun at, was attacked, was also uh, accosted. He was, they tried to kill him. They, they, they did everything they could. They lied on him. They, they put things on him that wasn't even true. They did everything trying to destroy his ministry. But they weren't able to do it. But Jesus himself knew that his coming into this world was for that very purpose to take our place. And so he did not let that destroy him. He saw the, the beauty in the midst of the failures of man. He, 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 he allowed the, the joy to, to come into the lives of, of believers that followed him. Even in the suffering of, of death, like the story of Lazarus this morning, covering the mourning and the grief with, a, with, a, with, with joy, joy that's unspeakable. But they weren't satisfied at that. The world was not satisfied with that. So the Bible tells us is that they took him to Calvary's cross and they nailed him to a cross. That story cannot be told too many times.
because this is what preaching is all about. This is what our life is all about. It's about the, the mystery of the gospel because it is the power into salvation. The world can only be saved by way of the gospel. So he was brought to Calvary and he was nailed to a cross. On that cross, the scripture confirms that he died. They took him off of that cross and they placed him in a barred tomb. And in that tomb, he laid for three days and three nights. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead, bodily and alive. He ministered on this earth for 40 days, and then he was taken up into glory, where he's sitting now on the right hand of the Father. But the Bible tells us that he's coming again, the coming of the Messiah. He's coming again, and he's going to be coming for his church, and he's going to be coming for his people. Now, the question is going to be, how is he going to find us working? Working for the good or working in destroying? Is he going to find us digging in the ashes of our life? Or is he going to find us upright and moving forward because we have taken the beauty of what we found in those ashes? Is he going to be finding us pondering over the failures of our life or, or over the successes that he has brought in our life? How is he going to find us, his church? Well, that's the question that you've got to answer with him. How is he going to find you? Will you be ready? Now, the first question can only be answered by way of receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You must have received him. You must ask him to come into your life and save you. If you've never done that, then none of those questions mean anything. Because I'm here to tell you today, there is no other way to the Father except by the Lord Jesus Christ. If you cannot stand and confess the fact that Jesus is alive in your life, nothing else matters about what we have preached, what we are talking about, or what's in store for you. You must know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. And so that's the question that you must ask yourself today. I'm going to ask all of us to stand. And as you're standing and stretching your legs, and I would ask you to just listen at your heart right now. Is the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart? Do you hear him yearning at your heart? Do you hear him reaching out in some way or some form or some fashion? If you do, he could be saying something to you. First of all, he may be saying that you've never been born again. That, that is something that is so sad that we would be in the vineyard all of our life, working just as hard as we can, and then stand in the presence of Jesus, and he says to us, as he said to some men that he was speaking to in the scripture that I never knew you depart from me it's not enough to be working in the vineyard Jesus says you must know him in a personal way if you've never given your life to Jesus the opportunity is being offered to you at this time why don't you come? Through life above. Why don't you come? Oh, come. Oh, come. Come to There may be someone here today who has left and did not find happiness in the direction that they went or did not find the contentment or did not find the purpose in where they went and decide they want to come back home. 
If that's the case, oh, I extend to you that, that invitation of the church. He will keep Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Through life abundantly. Oh, come. Oh, come. Come to God. Amen, amen. We've done what God has asked. and There is still room at the cross. Amen. do like that. I carry that one with me to work. Yeah, to them black Hebrew Israelites. The Messiah is coming. Are you ready? Yeah. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship and giving. Father, we thank you today for Jesus. Thank you for such a word at such a time as this because the Messiah is coming. Prepare our hearts for this worship and giving experience. Bless it so it can be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. church affiliation. All right. We all family. Hello, Brantley family. How y'all doing? Come on, family. Amen. What do you think about the word of God this morning? Boy, ain't that word as good? Oh my God, what a word, what a word. I stand, I stand now to deliver this, this message, not message, I'm on a, I don't know why I'm standing. Um, what it is? <laughs> okay. So, I have a letter here from the Hackers family and the Williams family in the way of announcements. The Hacker family and the Williams family want to thank, thank the pastor, the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church family. And they says, words can never describe how big of an impact all that you have made our lives to be. This was doing a home going service of her son, Willie Clyde Hackley. Sister Hackley, I want to say to you, you've been a pillar of this church You've been an inspiration to me since I've been here to this church. Um, thank you for all you do. And I'm sure St. Joseph is going to continue to do the job that they do. And y'all do a marvelous job. 
So the, fa- the Hacker family won't just thank St. Joseph for that. Amen. 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 Any more announcements? Yes, ma'am. for some of the people that I know were not able to attend who were home at six. So you all can see me if you were, if you attended and you didn't get a program, I have a few for you. fun to see who was born and what uh, what month and this yeah. kinds of stuff you yeah. know but you know I tell you what I feel sorry for mothers that had births in the month of July in Florida yeah. Ooh, Lord that must have been awful gracious yeah I'm glad God gave that to, to womanhood not to manhood and then, we, we I think we would be underpopulated <laughs> God bless you. That's why we love y'all so much, ladies. I'm telling you. Bless you. Bless you. As uh, Reverend Gibson said, so good to see 
my friends, Amen. bless you. God, very dear friends, Amen. very dear friends. Um, I want to remind us again, Saturday at 11 o'clock, please let us come and, and celebrate with Sister uh, Campbell um, the, uh, the memorial service of her, of her son, um, uh, celebrating his life. So let us come and support her in a time like this. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I understood that was your godson as well, Sister Smith. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, Wednesday night Bible study. We're, we're growing and growing and growing back. Ma'am? Oh, thank you. Yes. Business meeting tomorrow night. Uh, it's important that we do come for that because we need to... Uh, you know, even though we are a church, we still have uh, annual reporting times. The fiscal year ended in June, so we have to uh, give you all a report on everything. So let us be ready uh, for that. So tomorrow night at 730, Amen. if you will. What time? 7 o'clock, excuse me. Okay. 7 o'clock, okay. I'm back in the old days. Yeah. 7 o'clock, not 730. Seven o'clock. Amen. Okay. All right. Uh, and and I want to thank everybody for uh, supporting uh, Sister Hackley, Sister Amen. Betty Hackley, and Amen. homegoing service of her her son. Amen. You know. Her. Oh yes, yes. We. Oh, she is so sweet. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that we're overlooking? Anything? God bless you. Let's get ready to enjoy the rest of our day-to-day -day family wise. And uh, all announcements. Well, let us stand, please. <laughs> For the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. And let the church say, Amen. 